the year was 2004, and the song Hollaback Girl was becoming one of Gwen Stefani's most iconic solo hits. While I was a young, almost 21-year-old, single and utterly free, born and raised San Diegan, enjoying my life, taking classes I'd never use on job references, wasting away my youth, living it up. This reality would suddenly shift on New Year's Eve during a Soma Present show at the sports arena. Headliners like Strung Out and Taking Back Sunday and so many other bro bands were the backdrop to a clusterfuck of black hair dye, heavy eyeliner, studded belts, and diggies. It was the countdown ushering in the new year when Pennywise paused bro him to chant with the crowd, five, four, three, two. I turned around to anxiously I fuck the room and pluck out my midnight kiss. And standing directly behind me was an emo 2000 hunk in all of his sad, mysterious glory. His name was Zach. <laughs> and he was everything I was looking for. He was a 23-year-old man. <laughs> Hair dyed black with bright red streaks in his bangs that covered his left eye. He was wearing a black shirt, black hoodie, revealing his hand and neck tattoos, long black shorts that showed off his leg sleeve of stars, and black converse towering at 6'3", me, wet as fuck. <laughs> as I turned around, we immediately made eye contact and wished each other a happy new year. We went in for a friendly, hi, nice to meet you hug, but we both turned our heads inwards and kissed for the sake of convenience and raging hormones. Now he lived far out in East County, so getting back to his house was a bit of a mission, but for this hunky Gerard way look-alike, I was like the simple plan lyrics, I'd do anything. Na 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 na, na na na. <laughs> When we arrived at his place, I thought it was adorable how he quickly ran around collecting stray trash while simultaneously grabbing his stack of dirty dishes in desperate need of a pre-rinse and just shoving them into the dishwasher. Cause there he was, my New Year's dreamboat, and I was locked in bad. That night, I did my first beer bong. And for someone who hardly drank beer, I also had my first experience of shitting in a dude's bathroom and having him walk in. Yeah. Luckily, my new guy was cool with it, and he shut the door quickly while adding through the wall, the bong really blows it out of you, eh? <laughs> Part of me died, <laughs> but a lot of me lived that night as well. <laughs> We stayed up for 24 hours. We were playing cards and playing with body parts. We were watching the sun rise and collapse again. I didn't go home for several weeks and on night 14 at his place, while conveniently already on his knees from eating me out, <laughs> he asked me to marry him. <laughs> of course I said yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> who in their right, been up for weeks, drunk, 20-whatever-year-old, would say no, not I, not I. <laughs> now, a week after that, his mom took me shopping for a ring. Looking back now as a mother myself, I can't imagine being that on board with the horrible idea of committing to marriage after purely surface courtship. <laughs> Things were definitely moving fast, but so much magic was being packed into these first few weeks together. I turned 21, and we celebrated ironically in TJ, where you can drink at 18. <laughs> I drank every shot that followed the screeching sounds of the waiter's whistle, and I won the stripping contest, and then I puked as soon as we crossed the border bare feet. <laughs> We road tripped to San Francisco, and we belted along to the Atari's latest album, So Long Astoria while practicing the fine art of giving and the tricky art of receiving comfortable roadhead for the seven hour drive. <laughs> After San Francisco, I took my first plane ride to Chicago to celebrate Zach's great grandmother's 99th birthday. Memorializing the trip, we decided to get matching Alkaline Trio tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> This was Matt Skiba's hometown, after all, and it's the location of our favorite live record, Halloween at the Metro. <laughs> when, we returned to, when we returned home to San Diego, I gave my 24-hour notice to my landlord, formerly known as Mom. I let her know that I was moving in with Zach and Travis, his roommate. <laughs> 
when we tr <laughs> the three of us established a quick routine of staying up all night and playing Mario Kart while sharing the heroic responsibility of fetching burritos and carne asada fries from the 24-hour CD taco shop. I felt like everything had fallen into its place of belonging. I was happy. I was <laughs> I was in love. I was getting fucking married, y'all. <laughs> now Come Valentine's Day, my new fiance really wanted to pull out all the shots for his bride to be. He wanted to stay home and do drugs and fuck all night. <laughs> I thought I had hit the jackpot. <laughs> now being the good Catholic schoolgirl that my parents put themselves in debt to afford me to be. <laughs> That's real, guys. <laughs> I didn't do drugs, but I had friends that did. And I was too insecure to admit to my fiance that I wasn't really into doing ecstasy because I was really, really into doing sex. So I came up with this valiant scheme to champion the night by finding us the drug hookup and from there pretending to take the pills with him because how hard could pretending to roll really be? <laughs> so. While driving home from the pickup, I had an easy four-step plan to pull off my seam. Step one, just grab gum from my mouth and hide the pill inside the gum. Step two, toss the gum with the pill out the car window. Step three, take a gulp of Zag's bottle <laughs> for effect and pretend to wash it down. Step four, begin to act sensual and sensitive all over while cranking house music high enough to bust my shitty stock car stereo in my 99 Mitsubishi Eclipse. <laughs> now, I am proud to share that my four-step trademark plan worked and Zach was as happy as a baby, sucking his pacifier <laughs> while fingering me the entire drive back to his house. <laughs> Score. <laughs> When we arrived in the driveway and parked, it was go time. <laughs> we slow walked like cats in heat while his hands were so far up my skirt and, and tongues so far down my ear as we walked up the stairs to his unit. Now once inside, I immediately noted the video camera that he had set up ready to hit record. Hmm, kinky, I thought. So I excused myself to the bathroom and I put on some trash red lingerie set that was way too big in the hips and way too small in the boobs. When I returned to the bedroom, he was already naked and helping himself. <laughs> he was in a curious position that I had yet to see him in previously. Now, he was on all fours <laughs> with his head down in the pillow, moving side to side as though he was massaging his temple back and forth. His ass was propped high in the sky with a curve in the back, making that shit pop. <laughs> this arrangement was all incredibly confusing, but even more so terrifyingly intimidating. Like, what exactly is my sober, inexperienced ass supposed to do with all this ass? <laughs> so I slowly and cautiously approach the bed as his hips begin to move side by side seductively. Not knowing what else to say, I reverted to a casual, hey you. <laughs> he then whipped his head around and replied aggressively, lick it. I couldn't allow, I couldn't help but allow a low laugh to fall out of my mouth, but I refrained from full hysteria as I noted the vulnerability all over him. So I took a breath and I decided to approach this new territory with extreme compassion, <laughs> open-mindedness and love. I mean, this was my husband to be after all. Surely I can muster the courage to go wherever the fuck lick it is and beyond to prove my devotion and sincerity. So I bent down. I glanced back at the video camera. I looked down at my ring and I looked up at that ass that is oh so kind to be spreading open for me. 
I leaned in and I closed my eyes so tight as though my entire dignity could hide and preserve behind my lids. I bent down and I began to dart my tongue in and out of this dude a very few weeks bumhole. Now, not long after that, he reached back for my head and brought me up to meet his. And I think to myself, it's over, you made it. And in the distance of my imagination, I can hear the sound of a game show audience enthusiastically applauding and cheering for my victory. He pulls me into his face and he goes to kiss me. I try to spare my tongue, but he goes and fishes mine out, leaving buckets of saliva in my mouth. I am so never pretending to roll again, I promise myself. But just then, without skipping a beat, Zach pulls an object out from under his bed. And it's a fucking banana. Now this is a familiar item. It's one I've seen many times inside my lunchbox as a kid and famously shown on the fruit hat of a Chiquita. So I consider to myself that hoping and praying that maybe the ecstasy has made this wild motherfucker hungry for a snack packed with potassium. <laughs> no, no such luck shined down on me that evening. That's right, this wild motherfucker <laughs> was ready for me to ram this shit into his asshole and was patting it on his fucking ass while looking at me dead in the eyes. <laughs> now this is when most of you would decide that this is it. This is when young Sunny makes the big reveal that she's fucked up. She lied and she is not currently rolling. In fact, you're probably hoping she admits she is scared and she's in a desperate need of a safe word. <laughs> and anything to make this, whatever this is, stop immediately. But instead of doing what my heart begged me to do, which was excusing myself out of the bedroom, go running home to a priest and crying to my mommy, I grabbed the banana out of his hand. I pushed his head down into the pillow and I said, you fucking want this bitch? I did. I don't know what came over me. It was as though I had temporary floated out of my body and I took residency somewhere on the ceiling. I was looking down at myself, going through the motions while watching above somewhere on the bedroom scene. There I was, drilling this ripe, yellow, extraordinary girthy fruit into my boy. <laughs> I think my passions and my thrust must have been combined with absolute hate I had for this person for asking me to accommodate this shit on my Valentine's Day. <laughs> he squealed and he squirmed. You guys, he even backed that ass up a few times. And then without warning or indication, he came. He rolled over like a thump of a thing curled in a ball and fell asleep snoring. But I, however, was left very awake, holding a brutalized banana in the straddle position. I stared over at him in the dark for a long time, considering the future ahead. I finally tossed the banana in the trash by his bedroom door and I showered in a temperature that most would sizzle in attempting to sanitize my sins. And then I crawled into bed next to him. I was quiet and still, but hardly sleeping for the rest of the night. Morning eventually came, and his annoying roommate was heard outside of our door yelling, wake up, bitches, breakfast burritos on me. I was in no mood for a burrito or for any other object. <laughs> I could no longer innocently look at as something edible. All I could think is this is something that my fiance would want me to fuck him with. <laughs> when we didn't respond right away, the roommate took it upon himself to burst in and jump on the bed with us, making farting noises and giving my guy wet willies to the head. Once we finally agreed to join this douche churd for breakfast, he got up out of the bed and headed out of the room. 
but not before stopping to look directly into the small, open trash can next to the door. That's right, where our secrets from last night dwelled. Ew! What the fuck is this, bro? He grabs with his bare fucking hands the brutalized, sexed, ass-bang, tortured fruit from the night before. <laughs> As I sat in humiliating shock, not knowing what words could possibly gather to make this moment go away, I look over to my fiance, who's shaking his head, no, and pointing his fingers at me. Travis then shoots me a big ass grin and goes, oh shit, my dude's banging a crazy one. No wonder he's marrying you, hell yeah. Then goes into high five my fiance. Now I knew this was the moment I had to split. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck out moments later while they were both in the living room playing video games and waiting for me to get dressed for burritos, but our routine was no longer appealing. <laughs> I left a note on the bed that said, we're over. Oh, and P.S., I didn't take X last night. I grabbed the tape from out of the video camera and I started pulling the film out out of the cassette while driving away and cr cranking Gwen Stefani's giving like a whole new meaning to this shit is bananas. <laughs> B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>